Today we're going to briefly discuss how to prove that triangles are congruent using two column proofs. Now two column proofs do in fact have, you guessed it, two columns. The left hand column is always going to be a series of statements. The right hand column needs to always contain a series of reasons. The idea is very simple. For every statement that you make on the left hand side, you need to give a reason in the right hand side. So you can't just arbitrarily make statements. Every statement needs to have an actual reason. Now what can those reasons look like? What sorts of things can we actually use as reasons? Well, I wrote a list here. It's not exhaustive, but it's a nice place to start. So first on my list, is the series of our triangle congruence theorems that we've been studying in class. We have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and HL. Every single two column proof that we write to prove that triangles are congruent is going to use one of these four theorems. Underneath of that, I have written down the algebraic rules that we studied earlier in the year. You can see them all listed here. We won't go into each of them in detail, but that's just a nice little list for you to look back on. Okay, also, I have a series of angle relationships that we studied when we looked at parallel lines being cut by transversals. We have alternate interior angles, which we know are congruent alternate exterior angles, which are also congruent to each other, corresponding angles, which are congruent, and finally, same side interior angles, which would be supplementary, and the same could be said for same side exterior angles. They're also supplementary. Underneath of that, I have some definitions, terms that we've studied in the past, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, midpoint, vertical angles, and perhaps I should add in there the idea of bisectors. We can have both angle bisectors and segment bisectors, and a bisector just cuts either an angle or segment in half. So those are just a short list, or that's just a short list of things that we can use for reasons when we write our two column proofs. So let's get back to our example. You can see our example here, we've got two triangles. On the top of our triangle, we have triangle ABC. On the bottom, I have triangle ADC. And I want to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. So what am I given? I'm given the fact that segment BC is congruent to segment CD, and I'm also told that segment AC bisects triangle BCD. All right, so we're going to get to that in just a moment, but before we start the actual proof, let's just think about the plan that we're going to follow. We always want to start by stating three pairs of either angles or sides that are congruent to each other. There's a slight exception to that rule if we're going to prove that triangles are congruent using HL, but in general, you're always looking for three pairs of either angles or sides that are congruent to each other. Once you've established that those three pairs of either angles or sides are congruent, then we're going to use one of our triangle congruence theorems to state that the triangles are congruent. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is label my diagram with the given information. You can see that our given information tells us that BC is congruent to CD. So BC is congruent to CD. I'm also told that AC bisects angle BCD, which I think we know means that angles 1 and 2 are going to be congruent to each other. but we're not specifically given that those two angles are congruent, so I'm not going to label them as congruent right now. I'll label them as congruent once I've established that in my two column proof. So, once I get into my two column proof, the first thing I always do is state my given information. What am I given? Uh, well, I'm told that BC is congruent to CD, and I'm also told that AC bisects angle BCD. Ran out of room there. What's my reason? Well, the reason is that it's given. I'm told that that is true. If I wasn't told that that was true, I probably wouldn't be able to prove that these two triangles congruent. So right from the start, I think you can see we have one pair of congruent sides. Side BC is congruent to side CD. As we said earlier, we need three pairs of either congruent angles or sides. So let's see if we can figure out what other parts of these two triangles are congruent to each other. Well, right off the bat, I can see that side AC is shared between the two triangles. So, of course, side AC is going to be parallel or congruent to itself, excuse me. So, I'll write side AC is congruent to side AC. And what's my reason? Again, every time I make a statement, I need to be able to give 
a reason for that statement. Well, the reason for that I know that AC is congruent to side AC, I'm just going to say is reflexive. You hopefully recall that the reflexive property is something like A is equal to A. Something is equal to itself. In this case, AC is congruent to itself. AC is congruent to AC. So we're off to a good start. We now have two pairs of congruent sides, and we need a third pair of congruent parts for our triangles. So I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. How do I know that those two angles are congruent? I need to get again give a reason for my statement. Well I know that angles 1 and 2 are congruent to each other because of the definition of bisect. I'm going to say the definition of angle bisect or angle bisector. Right? We're given that AC bisects angle BCD. That's great. But we already know that when we see the word bisect, we mean we know that that means it cuts something in half. What is it cutting in half? It's cutting in half angle BCD, creating two congruent angles. So because of our understanding of this definition, we know that angles 1 and 2 are congruent to each other. So what do we have now, well, I've got a pair of congruent sides, a second pair of congruent sides, and you can see a pair of congruent included angles. Those angles are between the two sides that are congruent to each other. So what do I know? I now can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. Why or how do I know that those two triangles are congruent to each other? Well, they're congruent to each other because of side angle side, right? Side angle side. We stated side angle side with those angles included between the two pair of congruent sides. So there it is. That's just a short example of uh, proving that triangles are congruent using two column proofs. I hope it helps. I suggest doing some practice right now with the practice problems that are included.